Hello again and welcome to Man to Talk. I'm Tammy Garthwaite. Hey guys, I'm Carly Garrett. And here we are mid-October, less than three weeks from the election. Um, so there's I, that. You know, my life is a little out of control. <laughs> I was just begging them. They very, very kindly here at Manchester Public Television said I couldn't do my recording because I was supposed to come in yesterday, but I only saw that on Sunday. And then I had showings and I had to, like I was in the North Country, I wasn't aware of, but oh my God. My life is out of control, so you're going to have to tell me what is happening in um, the great state of New Hampshire. Well, let's see. We had a Columbus Day weekend, so I don't know if you, if, if you missed the pictures. So uh, we were in Wakefield, and at one point, I'm trying to think. It must have been on Sunday. Hmm. I think it was on Sunday. I don't know. One of the days this week. Oh, no, it was Monday. It was Columbus Day itself. Columbus Day, we had to go out and grab some lumber. Um, so we jump out and we go to get on 16 and we're going north so it was fine the traffic going mm -hmm. south i'm talking miles and miles and miles and miles like i was like okay note to self don't get on 16 south. and i uh i was driving on oh god friday north on 93 to go up and pick up some windows with marion and um the same thing. We got stuck like just past, of course, just past the exit and hooks it so you can't get off. <laughs> All the way to Concord was just like creep, creep, creep. And I thought, oh, good Lord. So then I saw a news clip. Um, <laughs> With the, the hikers on the oh mountain. God, and it looked like, like that year everyone died on Everest where people are like, just like. And that's what they had a woman who is a regular, you know, somebody who regularly hikes. And she said the trail that they were on, um, I think it was Artist Trail or something like that. Um, isn't it difficult, you know, isn't it? She goes, but these people are not prepared for any of it. She goes, there's people in slippers, people in go-go boots, people in short shorts. She goes, hardly anybody had even a bottle of water with them. And then the, there was a, you know, the parks guy who was talking about the trash that was left behind. And, you know, like, we love that people come to our state for tourism and to see the beauty of the fall and everything. But for, just don't, can you not leave <laughs> so, your trash? Someone asked on X, uh, well, what would be the free market solution to these overrun trails and everything? And, and I, I mean, I was half joking, but I was like, well, maybe we could have a, a permanent full dome and you create a forest and you have arborists who manage it, right? So people can come in for the, the Disney World of full foliage year round and then we reduce the pressure on yeah. the month of September and October. You would still get people who would come in. It would be priced right so it would become more exclusive, yeah. right? Like you can fix well, I mean, any problem I, with the right they, pricing. They did suggest on the article that I was watching... Um, that maybe they have to, like in different parking, you know, there's parking areas and all that, that maybe they have to start charging for parking. And I thought, mm, that's not a terrible idea. You know, I mean. No, I think that is, a, that is actually a free market right. idea. You could you also, know, I don't know, put a $40 toll on the border with Massachusetts. That right, would but, be. But do, uh, we, do we want to make it so that they won't come here and they go to work? Because we do want them to come here and of spend course their money. We do. Yes. So, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, ooh, but I think parking might be fair. I think the parking, charging for parking. And charging by the hour for parking so that people are people are coming. If you're there to take your picture, yeah, just get them out, take the damn picture, and leave. You know, go eat restaurant, go someplace else. Yeah, I mean, I will say this. I don't know if it's just been that I've been mostly in the North Country on Mondays or like strange days or it's post COVID or what, <laughs> but the. Uh, for a tourist destination, there are very few options to eat. Um, I think it's pockets, and if you don't know where, like even just my experience in Wakefield. So like, we were like, where do we go? So there's like the Naughty Pine Pub, which is ever you know, the local, everybody goes there. But if you go there at, at oh, we went a couple Saturdays to go for dinner at 6, 6.30, there was an hour and a half wait, and we mm -hmm. were like, what? So then we ended up going downtown, and I, I mean, we lucked out because we found a really great place, but there's like, you know, two or three places, but if I didn't know that those were the places that I should go eat at, I probably wouldn't find them. Yeah, although I will say I had a fantastic lunch yesterday in Littleton at a brewery. The last part of the name is Free House, because of course I would yeah. remember that part. It was um, Littleton Free House, I think. Uh, yeah. I, I, feel, I, I, I don't, don't know. remember, but a but, boring place in Littleton. How many? Like could on be? the water, it yeah. was packed. Oh, is Littleton was... right across? Is Littleton um, the town that's across from um, Lancaster? Yeah, so you go across is, the river. 
Uh, kind of. I mean, it I, is. It is. I, I think it's regularly been voted one of the best yeah. uh, little towns in New England. I think in America, actually, it's like three hours from several yeah. cities, right? And it's be becoming this like really incredible tourist destination. It's a really pretty downtown. Uh, so. You know, it seems like a good spot. Like that one had restaurants, but a lot of yeah, the other Littleton places. Yeah, Littleton is very cute. If it's it, Schilling, their company was it Schilling? Yeah, no, because no, they have really good food too. Right. Yeah, <laughs> actually, and and one half was on the one side of the river, and one was on the other, and they have a, uh, a really nice covered bridge yep. that isn't historic. It was built in two thousand and four, and I was like, you know what? I think I might do in all my free time one day. We should turn this pedestrian bridge that goes from West Manchester into a cover. East into a pretty little covered bridge, mm, why nice. not, right? Like, first of all, it doesn't look that great when yeah. you're driving on the highway and it's got like all the crap on the chains and, you know, it just kind of would actually look really pretty, pretty if there was this iconic yeah. modern, and maybe even a modern one. Why couldn't we have, I don't know, you know say you covered know, the bridges. The first argument that came to my mind was, and you know how many people would be living in that covered bridge. Ah, uh, no, see, I mean, I know we give Manchester a hard rep and I know there are political motivations for that. And certainly, you know, there was a lot to clean up after Joyce, but it also is a bit of a fine line. You know, I deal with a lot of clients from out of state and people based on the things we say yeah. about Manchester, yeah. everyone's like, oh my goodness, I don't want to live there. That sounds like a trash bag. And I'm like, uh, actually, it's an incredible city. It's very, very safe. There are a couple of issues, including addicts. Yep. Um, but, you know, like I was down by the river t this morning at daybreak. <laughs> and, you know, I got finally, it took me, I don't know, seven years. I got a shot of my heron flying over oh, the nice. river with the red and the, you know, yeah, all yeah. the trees and the colors. The bird itself is a little yeah. out of focus because I was like, oh, I can't believe it's <laughs> happening. Uh, but it's a really beautiful, yeah. iconic photo. And so I put it on X then. I was like, we have to remember we actually live in an amazing place yeah. and we should uh, actually appreciate it. So everyone who's like, oh, meh, meh, meh about the politics, life goes on. So speaking of the river and the heron and so on, um, this coming Saturday, for those who are looking for something to do, because if you haven't checked the weather, it's going to start getting warmer tomorrow. It's going to be in the 60s, um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I want to say Sunday gets 70, and then like through Wednesday, Thursday, it's going to be in the 70s, so we're getting a nice warm spell. But this coming Saturday from, um, I'm going to try to click on my phone at the same time, I think it's from 10 to 1, maybe 9 to 1, um, 9, uh, 10 to 1, the P Friends Piscataqua River Park are doing their fall cleanup nice. at the Piscataqua River Park, which is off of... Uh, at the bottom of Precourt Street on the west side of Manchester. Um, you don't have to be, they provide all the tools and the things you need. They always have coffee and donuts and food lunch and all that stuff. Um, sometimes they have shirts to give out. Um, but they ask volunteers to come and help with the cleanup. They, it, I know they, um, they cont were continually over there um, working on the bittersweet, and I think they were going to move the bittersweet piles that were cut in the spring because now they're dry enough to move. Right. Um, there's a part of the bridge that still needs painting. Uh, there's just basic cleanup of you know, yeah, random and trash. Clean. And I think they're going to do some clean out of um, when you first go towards from the Precourt Street entrance, there's an um, area that there was going to be a wildflower garden. You're like, oh, no. Nice. So that area starts yeah. to, needs to start getting cleared some and clearing. Yeah. Um, I haven't been in a couple weeks, so I don't know if there's if anybody else has been down there to do it. But that is um, Saturday the 19th, which is this Saturday, from 10 to 1. Um, good way to help out your neighborhood, uh, get out and <laughs> see a beautiful park. It is an absolutely beautiful park. And actually, as we've been working on it over yep. the years, uh, there are more and more people yeah. that we just meet on the trails who are helping. Yep. I It was funny because Louis went out to meet volunteers yep. on Saturday morning, and I was going to go to... Goffstown, but then I realized I didn't have enough time yeah. to get hit that trail. So anyway, I ended up down on the trail where they were too, yeah. but I thought, oh, I'll drop in somewhere else. And so, you know, uh, so I had my dog off leash and of course she somehow heard or smelled or whatever. And so she was off finding Louie in the forest. Yeah, yeah. 
And, uh, and so I met a new guy who's a new volunteer. They were all meeting up to look at the wet spots to try and figure out where to put like pallets yeah. and little bridges and stuff so we can use more of the yeah. space, you know. So, uh, but circling back to the covered bridge idea, maybe it doesn't yeah. have to be a historical right, right. covered bridge, right? So one of the things I'm interested in is just shaking people out of these like, little boxes, yep. right? Everyone's minds are sort of just... Yeah. Well, some people, some, yeah. And, and so it's like, well, maybe we have like a covered bridge competition and people are like, what about a covered bridge that has LEDs on the side and it's advertising? What if it looks maybe like, it I don't know, like a I know we modern wanna... one made out of swords. I, I don't know, know that um, was Game of Thrones We did talk about but... building a second bridge in the Piscataqua River Park because um, when you talk to a lot of walkers and people who want to use it, they people want to do a loop. You know, people don't want to go out and back. Right. They want to go out and around and yep. come back. Um, and Dan and Louie, I think, have sc scoped out a couple different spots where there, because there is an island out there, mm -hmm. and it's you know, I mean, it might get wetter at some time of the year, but it's it stays above ground. Yep. I mean, if you did it right, it would be fine, um, and it would t it it could tie a different part of the park to the trail system over there, which would yeah. be nice too. So it's really nice. And it's nice to know, you know, I think it's important when, if we, if everyone wants to be so involved with politics and yell their opinions mm -hmm. and all of that, you know, maybe that's a productive use of your time, but yep. probably getting involved locally yeah. and just coming to things, you know, either go to city hall and let them know your opinion or show up yep. and volunteer somewhere and do something that actually matters in your own yep. life, right? I did see that the city um, announced that uh, the new playground at Wolf Park is completed. So I haven't been by there. Um, I'll have to take a drive by, but I'm glad to see a park on our side of the, you know, especially Wolf Park, because Wolf Park was pretty run down and it was much improved when the whoever did the basketball courts for mm. us um, last year or two years ago. But there's a, apparently a playground there and it's much, much more improved now. Um, so that's nice to hear. Um, I tried to find an answer. I did not see one on what the status of the 88 coffee um, situation was. Oh, Last yeah. I read a couple days ago was that they had come closer to an agreement and I think it was like $445,000 for their property, which obviously, you know, might be the value of the property in the building, but I mean, the, the old business said they're not going to lease another property in Manchester that, you know, I, they, I, I read it as they would go somewhere else. And so for folks back home, this is, uh, there is a property across from Blue Bird Storage, Coffee 99 or something. 88 What's... Coffee. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Some number. <laughs> um, they, uh, the city is interested in taking it for eminent domain yep. for a, a sewer. sewer. It's a project to, so that water, I think, um, part of this whole thing that they're doing with all the the, there's more than one area to get the runoff water not to go into the river. So you're not polluting the river with runoff. So, But, I mean, is it going to be like a sewage plant? No, no, no. It's, 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 oh, it's, it's just like ground, a culvert or yeah, something. something. Oh, okay. Anyway, so, so that's interesting. You know, I mean... Some, uh, so I, this is a great example of like um, where you can't, weighing interests, yeah. right? But it's like, well, these people have to actually get compensated mm. for for what's happening, right? right? But then, but to what degree? Well, so, so no, I'm just saying, well, like, right? Because well, let's let's parse this out, right? So so the the scary story we're told is the holdout person, right? Yeah. Like that one person. So let's say, and this actually happened on the West side when uh, the hospital knocked down a whole block of really beautiful Victorians in like three months uh, to put in a parking lot, right? Behind, um, behind the, the hospital. And there was, there was one house that was a holdout and it's still standing. It's at the end of the block, right? And so obviously they were like, we are just going to wait. And then yeah. if everyone else got 500000 we're going to get a million or because nothing. they really need to get it. Or, or nothing. nothing, right? So there and is now a your house is at the end of a parking lot. <laughs> because you, yeah, exactly. Now your house is on an ugly street that yep. is on the end of a parking lot. Uh, it has no value later, right? right? Because they're not made. Well, I mean, maybe the hospital would extend it, but probably not to bring right, it in right. just for that part. It's not going to make sense. And I always think of... A photo I saw in China, oh, oh. and 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 
I have to say, like, I kind of admired the guy, but it was basically like it was like high rises and, and all these like little... Chinese developments and this like teeny tiny little traditional, yep. you know, like still bamboo house, right? That's just right there. And I thought, well, you know, be like that guy. But it's also like, well, you know, so at I, some like, stage, it's a trade-off. And it's not really something I want the government determining. But, um, you know, you look at, okay, in this particular instance, it's a small business. So the, he's, they obviously invested in a lot of equipment inside and interior stuff. You know, like, so, but the equipment is still, you know, like, that doesn't get torn. You, it's still your equipment. And I would, I mean, if I it were me, I'd be negotiating that the, for the removal of as much of that building to take with you to another location as possible. But then you also have to look at, I think, and again, I don't know that this would play into eminent domain because where do you stop? But you look at the, the size of the business. You know, are we talking about a business that's, you know, grossing $100,000 a year in business or a business that's grossing $600,000? Because close. But see, that shouldn't matter. And actually, there was that em eminent domain case out of, co uh, out of Connecticut, right, where they actually did, they, they changed it from state power taking something to do something for the state. Right. And the case, it was a Supreme Court case. They said, well, the state can take this to sell it to oh, no, a no, no, company no. or a corporation because these guys are going to pay more taxes than, that's the, than right. that's Coffee not at all 88, right? right? So there's, there's no, nuances I guess, I guess that's within not what I mean. the I'm just domain. saying if like, the argument, and I'm not saying this is Coffee 88 situation, but you know, here I am with my little business that is barely surviving, right? In a building that's worth $400,000 on the market. So how much should the government pay me to take that building? Is it, you know, you can argue, well, I'd lose my business, you know, well, but my business, but if your business isn't actually generating much income. So, you know what I mean? Well, there but is I also think a lot of these old arguments about eminent domain, where it does come down to what is fair market right. value, we have a lot more tools than we yeah. had 200 years yeah. ago. You know, I mean, you can go to a Zillow estimate. Yeah, yeah. You can actually go to, I mean, they're a little high. In fact, no, I heard I a really great thing yesterday. I was like, I'm learning so many things, right? So apparently the owner of... Uh, so Zillow estimates, the Zestimates yeah. are notoriously much higher yeah. than, than, you know, because they're trying to yeah. entice you to like list with them yeah, and everything. Yeah. But the CEO of Zillow had to sell his own house for 40% under the Zestimate, <laughs> which is the same as, by the way, you know, the Lock Life, Life Lock the ads where it's like some guy, privacy guy, and their vans, and they drive around and they say, he's so confident of his product that this is his social security number. Okay. Like, it, it's a... Um, it's a it's a person who says they can like lock down your credit or yeah. protect you from fraud or something, something like that. He so got hacked. He, no, apparently <laughs> like they're paying millions and millions just in marketing fees because this guy's like they they can't actually stop it. <laughs> oh. um, so yeah, I think I know there was something else I was thinking about. Um, so Joyce Craig and Kelly A had another debate. I didn't watch much of it. Oh, I saw like edited parts on WMUR and it's just so disingenuous. Well, and I, what I find funny, and I was thinking about this and I'm like, okay, so it's about semantics. So Joyce Craig said she will not, you know, she would veto a sales or an income tax, right? On one hand, but then she supports re-implementing the interest and dividends tax. And I'm like, but you realize interest and dividends is income. That literally is income for some people. And then I thought about it and I go, oh yeah, see, you don't want people getting income. You want to tax, you don't want to tax labor, but you want to tax income. And you have to really stop and think about what that means when somebody's saying like, so if you're, I mean, a lot of people, you know, especially older people, invested money and make, you know, subsidize their their social security and whatnot on with interest and dividends because they were wise with their money and they shouldn't be penalized for that. They paid money on that. It just shouldn't. It is an income tax. The tax on interest and dividends is an income tax, period. And so to make us truly income tax free, the, which is why it's tapered down and it's right. going to attract 
more, pe more people to New Hampshire. And more and wealthy, wealthy people. people. And we want wealthy people. You don't want to just attract people who need, you know, homeless services. You want, you need, you need the people who can employ people and can, you know, can donate money like this guy who donated to DART. Did you see that? This gentleman who had been uh, transported on the Dartmouth helicopter more than once for life-saving measures died, not from that. He <laughs> left, I think, $6.7 million wow. to, the, to the DART system because he, you know, but I'm like, but the, where do you think that guy, you know, should he be paying taxes on the interest and dividends that ultimately is going to get donated to something? It just, it seems to be a bit much. Well, it's also, you know, I, I, I feel like we're in such an abusive relationship with the state as it is. But it's kind of like, can we just go to back to basics and be like, well, let's run our budgets? Like... Right. How like we're, uh, well, a zero-based budgeting. Look at and life and figure out what we can actually, actually afford. afford, right? And not promise things for ten because years from now. I I also have a question about deferred maintenance, right? right. So there are all these schools and That's people are, are trying crumbling. Are they? Like, like, but why? But but it's not just but why. But it's kind of like well, if you go look at their budgets, there's hundreds of thousands yep. of dollars allocated. Yep to the maintenance, to the, the stuff. So I'm like, where is that money going? Right. Where is it right. going? If they're maintained and, constantly with regular maintenance. And, it was, and of course, that's the tragedy of the commons, right? Like no one really cares about the building, right? right. Like if you're lucky, you get a caretaker yeah. who's there for 30 years yeah, and they does, know yeah. everything and they're like, hey, we got to fix this and yeah. this is going to break next and whatever, right? right? But honestly, I mean, I don't know if you're seeing this, but you see it everywhere. Uh, there's shortages to hire everybody, everybody, especially right? skilled anybody. So it, it's down from, I think, the headline I saw last week. <laughs> I do earnestly read the front page of the paper every morning, but um, was that they're struggling to hire sports coaches. Yes, I saw and that. And I was like, gee, why would that be? Is yeah. it because, uh, I don't know, we politicized uh, kids' sports like yeah. lunatics, yeah. and now like everyone's dysregulated well, I mean, I mean, when you're going and to go, watch a soccer and, and look match? At, look at, I was just saying, look at, look at the parents, the way they act. At, you know, sports isn't just a thing for fun now. Now it's a super serious thing, and the parents get super, super serious about it, and they're screaming at the coaches. But I think and it's I'm because, like, can't the kids just play sports? But it's because everything's been dysregulated. What do I mean by that? Government's too big. Mm. Social media is driving everyone insane. And we're, we're, when I say it's too big, it's because all of this toxicity is just bleeding into everything, right? Like, yeah, you can't just actually be like, oh, I'm going to take my beach chair, and I'm going to go watch the kids kick a ball right. around, right? Now it's like, what Gender is on the toilet door. I mean, we're like four-year-olds again. I don't even know what's going on. It <laughs> um, is I also saw not local thing, but I saw it um, in the New Hampshire Journal. And of email. course, they're going to lose that case with the XX, right? So th for the folks, school is yeah, yeah because it's a free speech issue. And Speaking it's, of, there was a, uh, another case that I heard of, and this one's more local. Uh, Max Apple, somebody yeah. got hurt snow uh, sledding. sledding. And had sued Max Apple, and New Hampshire Supreme Court said, mm, no, the um, places that allow for recreation, so places that allow cross-country skiing or sledding or snowmobile, for they're free. For free, are immune from, I mean, it's... And also, I mean, there's a, there's a premise in, <laughs> Roman, uh, in Roman law. I'm even going to throw out some Latin here. Volenti non fit in uria. And that means you... Um, you acknowledge or you uh, accept. accept the risk of yes. certain things. Yes. So if you like want to, I don't know, strap Jump on boards to your feet and, <laughs> and go down a mountain. yourself down a mountain, you have to accept that those were decisions that may lead yeah. to you breaking your neck. Yeah. It's one thing if there's blatant negligence, you know, like there's spikes coming out of the ground that Max Apple was completely aware of and refused to fix. Right. That's not the case. You know, that's negligence. That is different. Just regular, that's why things are called accidents. People have accidents. People have been getting But hurt. you see, I think that's part of the problem in the world. So we have become, and this goes back to like Jonathan Haidt and mm -hmm. safetyism and all of those things, right? Like mm -hmm. people have become so risk averse that they simply cannot accept that life is not perfect is actually kind of risky yeah. 
And now that we're at the stage where we're trying to protect everyone from every single thing. Yeah, you can't. We're making the world worse. You know, yeah. it occurred to me this morning when I was walking, no one talks about occupational licensing this way, but it's actually not only a barrier to entry, it also stops experimentation. Right. So let's say you're 26. Like when I was 26, I was already a lawyer on two continents, right? But I also felt like I had to be a lawyer because like I'd spent a lot of money yeah. and a lot of effort to, to get a law degree, right? Licensed by the state. So then it's like, oh, I should just do this job, right? Like a doctor or yeah. a lawyer or whatever. They put so much in and it costs so much to get that, right? But at a property yesterday, someone said, I don't know what the hours were. I want to say it was 4,000 hours. I might be totally wrong. That you have to do to become a plumber, which is less than which if, is you, insane. if you become a cop, right? So two years of, of internship to become a plumber, right. right? That barrier to entry, right? Or in real estate, it costs, I don't know, like $4,000 yeah. just to get your license. And then it's a couple of thousand bucks every year just to keep it, Right. right. So instead of people being like, I'm not sure if I want to be a masseuse or right. a plumber or a real estate. But you can't try estate, it because you, you have to spend a, no. loads and loads and loads and loads of money. Yeah. So that is a concrete example where safetyism yeah. and just trying to regulate and control everything so hard because God forbid your plumber didn't have 4,000 hours to of run training packs. to flush the poop down the pooper, you know? <laughs> It's like, what are we protecting people from? The one rogue Why not just, plumber if you're really, one time? If you're really trying to um, to protect, just have tests. I, I, I would have gotten a discussion no, about... No, and the tests. I mean, I passed all those tests. What did I know? No, but I'm saying, can you, can you connect a PEX pipe? Sure. Yes. yes. Good. Can you do gas line? Yes. Right. You, know, can, you either can or you can't. Um, I did want to say this because this, was a, this one made me chuckle a bit because I'm just like, find myself. So you got the... Uh, Kamala Harris, word salad candidate who just <laughs> talks in circles and does whatever there. she does with words. But her running mate is just a buffoon. I mean, so he's a biggie too. He is just, first I saw a thing and I couldn't tell if it was real. He's out. He's out. Uh, with he's out hunting. Hunting. He looks like a He doesn't fun. look comfortable. No. But then I saw a clip and of course with AI, you don't know if it's real, where he couldn't load it. But I was like, okay, we're going to pass it out. But today I read a thing that he was talking about J.D. Vance and he said, well, he's a venture capitalist dressed up like a cowboy or something like that. And then he goes, I don't even know what a venture capitalist does. And I thought, you do not, you cannot be vice president. You, you don't know what a venture capitalist, you don't have to know how to be a venture capitalist, but right. if you don't know what a venture capitalist is, you have no business running for national office. No. None. None. Like, I mean, I'm none. sorry, but they, they just seem they, peak they, idiotocracy I can't, to me. I can't, Not in a, in a biased way, just no. objectively. I'm she, like, you She and does you this with her words, are... and he just continues to say things that I'm flabbergasted he could be that stupid. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm with sorry. you on that one. And he's the governor of a state. There is something wrong with the political system when that <laughs> yes, man served in Congress <laughs> and, was, and is governor because he's a buffoon. Anyways. I mean, that, that, he is a buffoon and we will leave it there. <laughs> That's all we've got for this week. Enjoy the warm weather and we will be back next Wednesday with more lovely things to talk about. Thanks, guys. Bye.